Hey everybody, uh, today we're going to be talking about the Midnight Solar um, Polarized Circuit Breaker, DC uh, Breaker that I've got right here. Um, it's winter time, so there's not a lot of things that I can do outside, unfortunately. Um, but the uh, hopefully the weather will be warming up here, at least we can get, get outside for a bit. Um, but I should let you know that this is either going to be um, the most boring thing you've ever seen, if you have no interest in these, um, or it is going to be shockingly important for you if you're like, what the heck is this thing and how do I use it? So, um, so there it is, and um, better stuff coming in the summertime once the uh, snow gets off the ground. Okay, so if you are um, actually watching this, then I'm going to assume that you are one of the very few people who may have seen, gotten this and said, what the heck is going on? What's happening? So let me show you what this is first. So this is a DC circuit breaker. So that's the first part. It's a DC breaker. Um, and it is made by, it's actually made in this country called Lesotho, which I have to be honest, I didn't know that was a country. So this put me on a rabbit hole for 30 minutes of actually reading about Lesotho, which is a landlocked country, not only in Africa, but it's surrounded by South Africa. Um, so, you know, there's so many things that are either made in the States or made in China or made in Mexico or something like that. You don't see a lot of things made in Lesotho, at least I don't. Um, but it's a six, and then that is uh, rebranded by Midnight Solar. And then that is resold by Stella Volta. And then the video is brought to you by Dust Haven. So the, the, it's just, you know, nobody, is, nobody wants to not brand things. That's just the, the world we live in. But what we want to do with this thing is we want to use it to, um, to break the current in the DC system. And this particular one is rated for 600 volts and 20 amps. So a reason that... Um, that I want this voltage, right? So this is 600 volts. Is because if you think of things like the new grow watt inverters that will handle a 450 volt DC, that's a lot of DC voltage. Now the advantage with DC voltage like that is obviously you can use um, much smaller cables, right? Much smaller wiring. And smaller wiring is just a lot easier to work with. If you're going to put it in a conduit, it's a smaller conduit. If you're going to um, just run wires, it's thinner, smaller stuff, easier to work with, cheaper, right? Um, also, the cost, for the most part, of running higher voltage stuff is less because there's less amperage rolling through it. And that's when you get into the, um, uh, into the inverters um, themselves and the charge controllers is it's, it's cheaper, generally, on the internals to have higher voltage and lower amperage. But you do end up with higher amperage, or excuse me, higher voltage, and like, what do you do about it? You need to have a, um, you need to have circuit protection. So I don't wanna get into the full shtick of like how you would set up your own um, circuit protection. There's um, a couple different ways of achieving that, but for me, one of the things that I needed or I wanted is this. Um, I wanted to be able to have um, something that I could actuate myself, and then something that would also be able to actuate um, if it, tripped um, and it says trip amps is i believe 26. so it's going to happily sit at 20 amps but it will um, trip once it gets to 26. and uh, the back of the envelope math for um, the circuit that this is going to be sitting in is about 8 16 to 18 amps is what i think is going to be a kind of the typical load through there so this is perfect right because it's rated for 20 which is higher than my typical loads um, and certainly if there's a short circuit of any type it's going to um, exceed uh, 26. so but this is a polarized um, this is a polarized breaker so let me show you a couple things about what's going on here so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce my uh, awesome uh, Walmart special, uh, but it keeps keeps going strong, um, multimeter. And this multimeter has a continuity thing, right? Continuity thing. So if I touch these together, it has completed the circuit and it makes a beep. So what you need to understand with this breaker, and I've got a couple other devices here that I'm going to show you too. Um, what you need to understand with this breaker is that, and this breaker is in the on position now, is that if I put... Um, and I'm not going to refer to this, by the way, because you can see this plus plus here and this minus minus here. Do not think of these as positive and negative. That's the first takeaway with this, with these polarized um, things, is that this is not positive and this is not negative. Now, 
every other place in the universe, right, including probably on this multimeter itself, if I was to look around hard enough, I'm going to find that this thing has a positive symbol here and that this thing has a negative symbol, right? Everywhere you go, electricity, if I put a Nerf gun to your head and said, what does it mean to have a positive symbol and what does it mean to have a negative symbol? You're going to say, well, golly gee, Eric, that means that's the positive side of the circuit and that's the negative side of the circuit, right? And you may even say, well, that means that's a load, because that's, you know, boom, you're going to put your power into it. But that's not the case with a polarized breaker. And we're going to show you how that works. So again, the circuit breaker is in the on position here. And then we're going to go ahead and connect into here. And we're going to connect into here. And guess what? Beep. Okay, so we've completed the circuit. So what that means is that we were able to get power all the way through this thing. Now, of course, if I kill it, no dice, right? Dead as a doornail. Turn it back on. Works like a champ. So uh, here's what's going on. Here's what's happening is you can see on these breakers and especially because this is again, large voltage, six thick, super thick voltage. This is designed for 600 volts DC. So what that means is that this thing when, so if you look at an AC, right? AC, basically the, the um, sine wave on AC alternating current does something like this. It looks like a snake, right? Okay. And what that means is that there's little periods like there, and like there, and like there, and like there, where it's actually zero, okay, where it's zero. So it's pretty easy to break. Here's an AC, a filthy um, AC household uh, breaker sitting right here. So it's pretty easy to break um, AC voltage, um, but it's very difficult to break DC voltage. And the reason why is because this thing can rely on the fact that there's a period where that actually drops to zero, but on this guy over here, you don't get that benefit on a DC circuit. On a DC circuit, the voltage is always up. So when you actually try to separate that DC um, current, it is gonna start arcing through the air, right? And you're gonna have this bolt of electricity literally going through the air. The problem is, is that air is very resistant, right? The air is not, just in case you didn't know, air is a poor conductor. Um, and as that, um, that arc, that electricity is flying through the air, right? It is going to generate a boatload of heat and that heat will probably start a fire. Okay. So arc is a big deal and arc is very dangerous and arc is super problem in high voltages. And, um, with DC, it's a problem even at, um, you know, lower voltages will happen with DC. It'll happen at higher voltages with AC. Um, so this thing needs to be able to uh, basically grab that arc, right? So that arc is like, you know, kind of going between my fingers there. And this thing actually needs to be able to suck the arc away and extinguish it and bury it, make it, make it gone so that it can actually break the circuit. Okay. And then that's what this thing does. And that's why there's so many, if you look at it, there's basically four circuit breakers ganged together, chained together. That's what's going on. So we have a current into here, right? And it goes through this breaker. And then it goes through this bus wire up here, which then goes down into this breaker, which then goes into this bus wire over here, which then goes up into this breaker and, -da 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 and spits out this other side. Okay. So, um, but the th one of the things I really want to, um, two things I want to kind of get into on the polarity of this thing, and you'll see it. If you read it right here, it'll say, it says polarity sensitive, do not reverse feed. Okay. Now the documentation is pretty poor for this thing. Um, I find a lot of things, unfortunately, they expect you to know a lot of information going into it and, um, it's, it's fine, but sometimes, at least for me, I need things kind of uh, explained like I'm five years old in order to make it so I can understand it a little bit better. So let me um, kind of walk you through how this is how this is going to happen. So the the, uh, the the big takeaway here, and I made little cue cards um, for you, for me, for us, is um, we're going to take our higher voltage stuff, right? So this is the part of the circuit that has higher voltage things. And this is the part of the circuit that has lower voltage things or potential voltage and potential are kind of the same, kind of the same thing. Um, this is probably the generation side, right? This is going to be your solar, your wind, etc., And this is going to be your lower voltage side. This is going to be your inverter, your battery, et cetera. Now this could be a little bit different. You know, there, there's a couple cases where it could be a little different. And again, I, I don't know your circuit, right? I know my circuit and this is what I'm planning on doing with it. I'm planning on putting it between my um, solar panels and um, I'm, I'm, then I'm planning on connecting it into my inverter, right? So my inverter doesn't generate DC power. It's just a load essentially. Um, 
But this thing certainly does generate DC power over here. So um, it is going to be whoop, creating a lot of um, voltage over here. Current goes that way. Um, for those of you who want to get into whole flow theory and nerd out, that's a separate discussion. Um, but uh, basically, this is the higher voltage side. Now, you may end up in situations if you have some different way you're using this thing where you're like, you know what, bro? Um, this is actually going to be the battery over here, and this is going to be a load over here, in which case the battery is the higher voltage thing, and then the light or the fan you're running or whatever is over here, and that's the lower voltage thing. So you need to know, you have to know, you have to absolutely know what the higher voltage stuff is and what the lower voltage stuff is if you want to use something like this. Okay. Um, now, this is different than a fuse. So I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to kind of move this stuff out of the way for a second. And um, this is a class T fuse um, holder, right? So uh, you basically connect to here and you connect to here. Um, and then there is a class T fuse that sits in the middle of this and it will burn out. Now, this thing doesn't care and like a little, the little, uh, if you, you know, near your car and you um, open up the fuse panel, you see those little blade fuses in there. It doesn't care which way the current goes. It doesn't care if the power is going this way or it's going that way or it just doesn't matter, right? Like this thing is basically just going to respond to um, too much current. And as soon as too much current runs through, it's going to burn itself off in half and leave a big gap there enough that um, uh, the arc can't go through. Right, like that's that's what it's gonna do. That's it. So pretty dumb, pretty straightforward. But if you're in a situation where you don't really know which way the current's gonna be going, that does seems odd to me, but it could be a situation like that. Then this is the kind of thing you want to run, right? You want to run a class T fuse. Um, those fuses are pretty expensive. If you burn one of those things out, you are out, um, you know, fifty dollars potentially, seventy dollars, depending on the kind of fuse that's sitting in the middle here. So class T fuses are expensive. Um, this guy, however. If it trips or you want to shut it off, you just do that, right? And bang, it's back on again. Now, this guy, the um, our, our fuse system over here, I would really look at fuses. And the way I look, the way I look at fuses, are fuses are something that if they blow, they basically saved you from dying or burning your house down or something like that. Fuses are not supposed to be ever blown. They're never supposed to be tripped. It really is. You 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 connect. You took a you were working in there and you put a wrench across the terminals. Not these terminals, but you did something extremely bad, right? Something went wrong. There was a piece of equipment that failed, and then you were just going to have a massive inrush of current, and boom, you need it to stop so that you don't blow up your whole world. Um, this guy, that's what this does. This is different. This is for something um, where you're like, you know what? Um, I want to be able to shut off power because I'm going to work on something. Right. So back to back to this situation here where um, I went and there's solar disconnects. That's a separate discussion. Right. I actually have a solar disconnect as well. But the solar disconnect is sitting at the panels, which is a long way away. Um, I want an ability to be able to turn off um, my um, my power. OK. And I know you can also use a, a disconnect switch for that, which I have, too. But I also wanted something that in case there's some kind of a short circuit situation, I can use this. OK. So um, again, you, you may not even want one of these. You know, it depends. Maybe you have to follow code. There's different reasons. Um, but let's kind of keep stepping into it. So the way you do it, here's how this thing is actually wired. So I'm going to take my, um, my cool screwdriver. One thing I would recommend to do, too, is when you put wires in for stuff like this, don't have a lot of tail, right? If you can see, this wire fits in there pretty nice, right? There's not a lot of uh, copper hanging out outside of it, right? You want to you want to minimize the amount of copper that's just exposed um, in the air, right? Um, the reason that copper is cut away or the sheath is cut away from the copper is so that the copper can make a contact with the metal um, uh, inside there. But that's it. There's no need for copper to be showing or anything like that. Because if you can see copper, that's one more place where um, somebody who's futzing around with a tool can like, you know, connect something. So we don't we don't want to do that. We want to make sure that we have nice clean connections wherever possible. And then I'm going to open up this one. And I'm going to put in this cable right here. And if you'll notice, again, these are both red wires. And that's not me being lazy and using the wrong um, or not lazy, but you know, sometimes they don't have what you need at the store, or you don't have what you need, and you just got to make do. But that's not what's going on here. So I'm particularly using red on purpose because these are both positive wires, right? And this is essentially how this is going to go. So this would actually be connected over here to my higher voltage stuff, and this over here would be connected to my lower voltage stuff. 
Now let's, we're gonna forget about these little two little wires here. In fact, I'm gonna hide those. Um, we can talk about those in a sec, um, but let's see if I can like, we'll tuck, tuck those up. Okay, um, so here we go. Okay, so looking good, looking good. Now, the other thing that I wanna show here, and I actually don't have a spare <laughs> black wire. Um, so I'm gonna use uh, some uh, some headphones that I have laying around um, on my, uh, I just have laying around, to, to basically demonstrate what the black wire would be doing in this whole thing. So in this whole thing, and if I move this up a little bit, okay, the black wire, the negative wire, doesn't interact with this thing at all. It's a real big takeaway, okay? And this is the same thing if you're looking at household breakers, something like this, okay? All this does is this just interacts with the um, positive, like that, and does nothing with the negative. Okay, so that is the um, that's this is the big takeaway. This is the big reveal of what you want to do. Now, um, one thing to note that I would add on to this is that if you um, from Stella Volta, what they have said in their documentation is that if you reverse polarity this thing. Um, it will work. That is, they've said that. They're like, it will work. However, it will probably work once and then it will fry the insides. And I've also heard that this might work once and then it's going to set the whole thing on fire, which in either case probably will disrupt the circuit, but there's no need <laughs> to set your building on fire in order to kill the circuit. Um, so make sure that you have it wired in the correct way where you have your higher voltage on the plus plus and the, the minus minus, not negative, but minus minus is your lower voltage connection. And that's how you do these polarity sensitive, um, uh, polarity sensitive breakers. So hopefully that's been of some use uh, for everyone. Um, you know, if, if this is something that's already familiar for you, you're like, yeah, bro, I totally get it, makes sense. Um, but for those of us who may not have experienced or worked with polarity sensitive um, uh, breakers before, um, this one threw me for a loop. Um, again, uh, you know, if I was to ask you in any other normal day, what does that symbol mean? And what does that symbol mean? You absolutely should say, well, that means that's positive And that means that that's negative because that's exactly what that means. Except for today. Um, today we're all wrong because this means the higher potential. And then this means the lower potential side of the positive, um, wire in your circuit. So, that's the nature of these. The good news is, is that these are actually going to be phased out. I believe um, this, I'm making this recording in the end of 2021. And um, I believe in 2022, um, they're going to be making polarity insensitive ones. So you don't need to necessarily know what you're doing to wire these up correctly, but there's a bunch of these out there and they're still being sold. Um, and I imagine that there are other polarity sensitive um, uh, breakers out there that, um, that I don't know about. And um, they're, they're going to function probably a very similar way. So. Sorry, that's my uh, multimeter telling me to uh, pipe down and that's a great time to go ahead and kill this video. Anyway, so this is Eric from Dust Haven. Sorry you can't see me. I'm kind of working down here with my hands and um, I hope you have a great day out there and give you a little thumbs up. Um, and most importantly, I hope you're doing really good work that you can be proud of. That's it, have a wonderful day, goodbye.